Hello, this is John Jeremiah Sullivan. I'm reading from a collection of essays called Pulphead, and this is the beginning of a piece titled The Final Comeback of Axl Rose. He is from nowhere. That sounds coyly rhetorical. In this day and age, it's even a boast. Socioeconomic code for I went to a second tier school and had no connections and made all this money myself. I don't mean it that way. I mean, he is from nowhere. Given the relevant maps and a pointer, I know I could convince even the most exacting minds that when the vast and blood-soaked jigsaw puzzle that is this country's regional scheme coalesced into more or less its present form after the Civil War, somebody dropped a piece, which left a void, and they called the void Central Indiana. I'm not trying to say there's no there there. I'm trying to say there's no there. Think about it. Get systematic on it. What's the most nowhere part of America? The Midwest, right? But once you get into the Midwest, you find that each of the different nowherenesses has laid claim to its own somewhereness. There are the lonely plains in Iowa. In Michigan, there's a Gordon Lightfoot song. Ohio has its very blandness and averageness faintly comical to cling to. All of them have something. But now I invite you to close your eyes, and when I say Indiana, blue screen, no? And we are speaking only of Indiana generally, which includes southern Indiana, where I grew up, and northern Indiana, which touches a great lake. We have not even narrowed it down to central Indiana. Central Indiana, that's like, where are you? I'm nowhere, go there. When I asked Jeff Strange, a morning rock DJ in Lafayette, how he thought about this part of the world, for instance, did he think of it as the South? After all, it's a Klan hotspot, which can be read as a somewhat desperate affectation. Or did he think of it as the Midwest or what? You know what he told me? He said, some people here would call it the region. William Bruce Rose Jr., William Bruce Bailey, Bill Bailey, William Rose, Axel Rose, W. Axel Rose. That's where he's from. Bear that in mind. On May 15th, he came out in jeans and a black leather jacket and giant black sunglasses, all lens, that made him look like a wasp man. We had been waiting so long in both years and hours. It was the third of the four comeback shows in New York at the Hammerstein Ballroom. It was after 11 o'clock. The doors had opened at 7 o'clock. The opening act had been off by 8.30. There had already been fights on the floor, and it didn't feel like the room could get any more wound up without some type of event. I was next to a nice woman from New Jersey, a hairdresser, who told me her husband did pyro for Bon Jovi. She kept texting one of her husband's friends who was doing pyro for this show and asking him, when's it going to start? And he'd text back, we haven't even gone inside. I said to her at one point, have you ever seen a crowd get this pumped up before a show? She goes, yeah, they get this pumped up every night before Bon Jovi. Then he was there. And apologies to the nice woman, but people do not go that nuts when Bon Jovi appears. People were going nuts. He's not a tall man. I doubt even the heels of his boots, red leather, put him over five feet ten. He walked toward us with stalking, cartoonish pugnaciousness. All anybody talks about with Axel anymore is his strange new appearance, but it is hard to get past the unusual impression he makes. To me, he looks like he's wearing an Axel Rose mask. He looks like a man I saw eating by himself at a truck stop in Mont Eagle, Tennessee at two o'clock in the morning about 12 years ago. He looks increasingly like the albino reggae legend, Yellow Man. His mane evokes a gathering of strawberry red, intricately braided hempen fibers, the sharply twisted ends of which have been punched individually a half inch into his scalp, 
His chest hair is the color of a new penny. With the wasp man sunglasses and the braids and the goatee, he reminds one of the monster in Predator, or of that monster's wife on its home planet. When he first came onto the scene, he often looked in photographs like a beautiful, slender, red-headed 20-year-old girl. Now he has thickened through the middle, muscly thickness, not the lard-ass thickness of some years back. He grabs his package tightly, and his package is huge, only reporting. Now he plants his feet apart. You know where you are? he asks, and we bellow that we do. We do know. But he tells us anyway, you're in the jungle, baby, he says. And then he tells us that we are going to die.